Hey guys, got another one for you today. Uh, today I am in my TVP 5051 and we are on Abbey. It's an encounter match. Um, <clears throat> not a lot of tier 10s, good mix, 8, 9s, and 10s. They do have more 9s than us. Um, and I think, no, we're even on 10s. All right. <clears throat> so the point of this video today is I'm going to try to explain. Uh, communication teamwork um, as far as once you're dead what you can do to help the team um, it's too bad this just doesn't have audio replay because you would really truly understand what made me uh, want to play this video but I'll try to explain it as best I can this won't be too hard all right <clears throat> so my TVP uh, I feel like this is a good support medium Really, if you stick with your heavies or your whoever's, whichever side's pushing, um, you can get in good flanking shots. What I like to do on Abbey uh, is get set up right here and get vision on anything that crosses the G1 to G2. Uh, and the E50 tries to take point here, and I'm just going to give it to them. I really don't like getting in like tussles with people as far as like ramming their tanks because they stole my position. Uh, so we spot an IS-7 and I can't see him, um, but I also am detected so I don't really want to figure out what's looking at me I guess. There's a 50B up here and they have three tanks going to the middle so a good counter to the middle is where our scout's at in E2. And our 50B is going to recognize this and push up. So two autoloaders should be able to dispatch these guys pretty easily. One thing the 50B does great is he tracks at E1 and then the T44 can't go anywhere because he's stuck behind him. I should take one more shot at the T44's butt and I just have no idea where that shell went. Um, but whatever. To me, um, the Skoda and the TVP just feel like you can never get your last shell of the clip in, so I think it's just like a magic trick that Wargaming plays on me. Alright, so you can see we have all our tanks down this flank. To me, we need to go. Like, um, these guys in the city are going to be a pain in the butt, so if I can take care of them, I should be able to get easy flank onto their team in the south. However, that Conqueror could have been detecting me, but I also feel like Artie was as well. Uh, Artie usually likes to look at this location, so it's a pretty dangerous spot. And I kind of have a, a shot on this Conqueror's hull, but he's not... It's not like a really great shot, so that's why I didn't take it. So, there it is. Artie blasts me. Artie poops on me. It seems like you know, we're, I wouldn't say we're winning or losing this fight down here. However, I'm going to get a full clip and I'm just going to see what I can do as far as taking some guys out here. So I get out in front of this E100 so I can see his lower plate. I'm just going to put two rounds in him and then there's an IS-3 behind him. He's up too high so I can get his lower plate as well. And this is what the TVP does best. Is it just removes tanks from the battlefield uh, in a quick succession of bursts. Our already smacks at Waffle Trogger E100, and we're almost through this choke, okay? So one thing you definitely should learn is if you see two marks on someone's barrel, you should give them respect. Um, to get two marks on a tank is not easy, um, so they have to be pretty decent. Now this IS-7 is... He's got two marks, and I can tell he's a really good player because he focuses down the weakest tanks. Like, he could just shot me there, um, but he knows that I'm only going to dump four shells, and then I'll have to reload. So he takes out our 50B, and then he puts one into the E50M because the E50M is uh, shooting at the E3. And the E3 is going to help him stay alive if possible. So I was kind of in this motions way the whole time. 
um, but I don't know why he just didn't push out. We dispatched the IS-7 and the E-3, and you can see somebody's putting pressure on the cap, which, I mean, if they were to put three on, I might get worried, but they have one on. And I'm assuming that somebody is going to come take care of Artie, and just when I suspect that, um, on the map, Artie spots a scout. Now he turns on his mic, and he... Um, he starts raging about how we let him die, um, how this scout got by us, and it's all our fault, and we're probably going to lose now. <clears throat> so to me, that's really just terrible criticism. This 1390 has no idea I'm here. I take a shot, and I give him a ram because I can't clip him out with the two shells I had left. Um, so the ram was needed to take care of him, make sure he was dead. Now if I miss my ram on him, I'm, it's going to be pretty tough for me to take him out, depending on how he was clipping. Um, if he was still clipping since he just killed Artie, I imagine once he gets his clip in, if I leave him on a sliver with my two shots, then he's going to dispatch me. So you can see it's a 12 v not, or a 12 versus 9 as far as points wise, it's a 6 v 3. And I notice there's a platoon, uh, there's a T light and an object 704. And at this point, I'm just going to switch to the T light here. So he's full health, uh, his 704 is half health. He's got a mutant sitting down in H6. And the 704 asks him to deal with them. And you can see me um, in, my, in the TVP, I'm coming towards. Uh, this tank is a huge threat, I want to take it out. The 704, I would say, is equally a threat just because of the gun. Um, however, the armor mobility, we should be able to kill the 704, um, where this T-Light is, to me, more of a dangerous tank. So their 704 kills our Tiger too. And I get a shell in him, and I did have one more shell, but I figured if I rammed him, uh, only the 704 would be left and my team could take care of him. Alright, so killed his driver, put him on 23 hit points. Now he's coming up to assist his 704, um, our motion's right there. But he's targeted from the mutant, so he's got to get out of here. Which gives our M103, which is in H3, the ability to kill the 704. Uh, H3 is a good location to shoot across the the K line, however, you really are unable to help your team if um, if they need it over in like behind this hill in the field. So there's our M103, he misses a shot on the T light. Mutant's kind of chasing, and the, the mutant really makes a big mistake here as far as um, staying out in the field. There's no way he can out-traverse a T-Light. Now that's pretty amazing watching that shot from this T-Light onto the motion. The angle that he put his shell into him was pretty remarkable. Um, so this mutant's gonna try to just get a shot on him, but there's no way he can give him a lead. He's barely got his gun on the T-Light. So what he should have done was driven up against a rock. At least that way the T-Light can't out-traverse his turret. Um, and he could have made it, made the T-Light work a little harder to get him killed. So now we just have the M103 left on our team. And T-Light makes a good play here. He's not going to go fight the M103 up on the hill. To me, I'd be thinking, okay, I got to get this M103 out onto the hill. Now, Artie hasn't said anything, so I think it's, you know, potentially just the M103 and then me watching the game. Um, and I want to give the M103 pointers, but I don't want to be that guy that's really annoying to, like, tell him exactly what to do. I don't, I haven't really watched how he was playing. Um, I wasn't too thrilled about his location. And then he goes down here 
and I think like a new player would probably just kill themselves, but he, he knows how to cross this pretty effectively, so um, I think he's an experienced player at this point. Now if I were him, I would get in into the city and then go up on top of that hill there. Um, that'd be nice because you have good gun depression in that 103 and um, you can get vision down onto the cap. However, if he is down the 8 line, um, then you're not necessarily going to be able to get shots into him, so you'll need to like drive down the hill or essentially go around the city to get onto the cap to stop the capping. So he's got two minutes and he takes a wide angle here. Um, you know, that's not a bad idea. I'm sure the tea light's not expecting him to come from the north. So in my head, I'm thinking, you know what, just let him play. Um, one of the worst things that can happen is when you're in a 1v1 scenario and you're trying to win the game is somebody chimes in on the mic and starts telling you, you know, how, what to do, how to win the game. Because um, really, you need all the focus you can to get to get through it. So he's got 586 hit points. He's a two shot for the T light. And the T light's on a sliver. Um, so I go over my mic and tell him that he should load HE. Um, and he does have a mic on. So now at this point, Artie fires on his mic, and he's like, Look at here, you A-hat. You need to go up and around the 8 line. You can't get up here. What are you doing? You're stupid. Um, and he's just continually calling him names and pretty much yelling at him. Um, and then I try to give him advice. Uh, after he tries to climb up here, I, I let him know that he just needs to stay on the cap and then he could potentially drive over to the 8 line just a little ways up. However, when I'm ta saying this, he, the other our artillery guy is continuing, continuing to barrage him with comments. Um, so finally this guy turns on his mic and he says, flips out on the guy and he says that he's trying, he's not a very experienced player, he doesn't know how to get up there, uh, he just wishes that he could get some constructive criticism rather than just being name called the whole time. <clears throat> Which then sets our artillery player off and he's like, well maybe you could learn from us veterans and listen and do what we tell you um, and just continues to rant and I'm, I'm fire on my mic and I'm like dude just ignore this guy mute him if you can but it's already too late like these two are barking at each other and to this point obviously he's already admitted he's not a veteran player uh, so I tell him they start to calm down a little bit and I just tell him um, you need to stay on cap and wait for him to make the move. I'm going to speed this up. So when I left the game, after hitting that T-light, um, I didn't expect us to lose. Um, I did know and think that they had two strong tanks, and being in a platoon that would be helpful, but I felt like we had enough tanks and gun power to dispatch it. So another lesson here is to learn um, that it's never over, um, and to me, if I try to wait for my next shell to come in, he's already shooting at my side and he's driving by me. So um, essentially to get my turret back around and to shoot him is to me going to be difficult. And I was hoping that I could just ram him to death and if I committed suicide that was fine with me. So at this point Artie continues to tell him to go up and around and I tell him no that's not going to work because the cap is going to go off. Um, but he continues to go north anyways because why not listen to the guy that won't shut up and continues to criticize you rather than the other player that's trying to help you. So he says I don't care I'm just going to uh, stay alive and save my silver.
and we lose. Props to the T-Lite player. He pulled this game back. Uh, he had a hell of a game. So go to end game results. Uh, I did 5,600 damage. Um, obviously the best in the game. Um, but it wasn't enough. The T Light did 3,500 damage and had six kills um, compared to my five kills. So um, it was a mastery badge class three, um, which I've shown in a previous video. The TVP's next to impossible to ace. Um, but that's really all I got for you. So at the end of the game, um, if you stick around in games, which isn't something I always do, usually if I have a really good game and I feel like it's going to be over soon, I'll, I'll stay and watch. Um, try to give good pointers. Um, just calling people names isn't going to help them win at all, which is essentially the goal for you to get more XP and silver. Um, so that artillery player does what artillery players does and A, blames us for um, letting him die and then continues to rage and make sure that we have a miserable game like he had so um, toxic arty players like that and I shouldn't just call limit that to arty but I'm just rambling on guys so I'm gonna cut it out I'll talk to you later like share subscribe thank you